What's going on guys? My name is Valerio and welcome to another tutorial here on our channel, The Guide. Now the topic for today's video revolves around chance creation and more specifically the situations that occur quite frequently in FIFA 20 where you receive the ball with your striker, whether be it in the box, just outside or on the edge, to the sides, and you're trying to figure out what factors matter and how they should drive your decision making into creating the best possible opportunity. And the key word here is factors because there are certain things that you have to keep in mind and you have to look out for because if you simply rely on one mechanic and you spam it for every single time you have the ball on the edge of the box well then you're not really accounting for what's in front of you you're not considering all the different factors that are on the table so hopefully today's video will shed some light on said factors first by understanding them each and every one individually and then applying them all together in real game situations where you'll actually have to weigh them against each other and decide what to prioritize and what to forget about. First though, if you are interested at getting individual personalized coaching to hone your FIFA skills and reach the next level, you can check out our website in the description box down below. Now in terms of coaching, we currently have a 25% discount running. Once you make your way to the website, simply click on the coaches header at the top and you'll be directed to our selection of hand-picked coaches. Depending on what you're looking for, you'll be able to select coaches at different tiers from basic, advanced, all the way to elite, where coaches ranging from elite to pro level will guide you through a personally tailored process to increase your skills. Now, without further ado, let's get into the video. When we talk about body positioning as a factor, we mean the body positioning of your player as he has or receives the ball in dangerous areas inside the box or just outside on the edge. How he is positioned should always be taken into account so that he can lean towards the correct decision. And we have plenty of tutorials that teach you how to mechanically perform certain skills, concepts, fake shot variations, etc. on the edge of the box. What really makes the difference, however, is choosing the right tool, so to speak, for the job. And this will always depend on the context. Now, in this clip, we find ourselves with Messi just outside the box, and he has two defenders ahead. Our player is positioned facing slightly upwards, and with an angle. Now, the first move I'd like to make here is move to the space on the left of my player, and how I decide to do that comes down to the positioning of my player. This was the cue that I took. I could left stick dribble, but when the desired destination is at a 90 degree angle to where I'm actually facing, I tend to perform a scoop turn because I find that it transitions me a lot faster. We have a dedicated video for basic skill moves, including the fake shot and thus the scoop turn, which is a variation of the fake shot. So if you need to learn the foundations first, I highly recommend clicking the links in the description box down below. That being said, I hope that in this situation, the body positioning of my player made it clear that the fake shot or the scoop turn was the right choice. And again, to illustrate how a factor like body positioning as a striker receives or has the ball shapes our decision making, this is a really good example to do so. Here we have the ball with our midfielder as we do notice our striker in a tiny pocket of space. Now as we make the pass to him, our striker approaches the ball and is thus now positioned looking away from the goal and at a slight angle. There's a huge opportunity here obviously with the open space in behind and our goal is to turn our Lukaku on the inside but we have to do so swiftly in order to also make sure that we have the time to take the shot and run away from incoming pressure. The best way to do so in these situations when you're looking away is to go for a first time fake shot in the desired direction which as you can see puts us exactly where we want to be in one swift motion also sending the defender the complete opposite way. Ideally, when you play FIFA 20, you'd have a team full of players with a 5-star weak foot, so at that point, you never really have to worry about a player's strong foot or a preferred foot, and you can just look at where the space is, turn as you desire, fake as you desire, and you can make your opponent go crazy. Since for obvious reasons that's not always realistic or possible, you will have moments when you receive the ball in very dangerous areas and you have to consider your player's strong foot when deciding which direction to turn and what tools to use to do so. This clip is very basic, but it's the very foundation for this concept in FIFA 20. We're fortunate here to find ourselves again with the ball in our opponent's box, but the job isn't done yet. Zaniolo is a left footed player and to get him on that foot in FIFA 20 there is arguably no better tool to use than the drag back because as you can see from this clip it allows us to turn 90 degrees 
while our opponent completely loses track of us. Like earlier, I recommend checking out our basic skill moves tutorial if you need a stronger foundation on how to use the dragback. This time around, we find ourselves receiving the ball with Figo deep inside the opponent's box, and this is an extremely dangerous situation, and a common mistake in these moments is that people rush to finish off an opportunity. What rushing the situation might look like here is to look for the shortest route for the shot. That is, in this case, to take a touch instantly on the inside and go for the shot. However, as Figo is predominantly right-footed, going for the instant touch on the inside would put the burden of the opportunity on his left and thus weaker foot. So all we do here is keep composed and just hold our analog stick downwards so as to make sure our player traps it towards his strong right foot despite it being a longer route than instantly turning on the inside and on his left foot. Now the result here speaks for itself and the reason it works so well is because the same way most people make the offensive mistake of rushing into the shortest route and forgetting about a player's strong foot Oftentimes, the defensive player will be making the same mistake because he's also panicking just as much as you are offensively. Where your opponent is positioned while defending your player in and around the box is yet another important factor to consider. You might have your opponent to your left, he might be to your right, he might show signs that he's about to anticipate a specific turn of yours, or he might be right behind you. Either way, it's always something to keep in mind because at the end of the day, if you fail to do so, you'll find yourself dribbling straight into your opponent's traps. In this clip, we're actually about to receive the ball in an interesting area, but our opponent, as you can see, is right on us, putting a ton of pressure. The idea of cutting inside with a first-time fake shot or simply trapping it on the inside is very inviting, but the positioning of the opponent makes it a bit risky as he could easily stop us on our first touch. Turning away into the outside while trying to rotate around could work, but with how close he is to us, we would be risking a poor first touch and thus inviting pressure from the midfielders on the edge of the box. As a result, what we do is we just hold down L2 and tell our player to shield the pressure away. As oftentimes, such aggressive behavior in the box can be tough to control, and so we're putting the burden of the situation all on the defensive player. That's eventually our opponent's downfall, that he cannot control the excessive pressure, as all we do is simply shield him off. And he seems to go a bit all over the place, which leads to us finding ourselves wide open for the easy finish. Slightly different situation here as the ball approaches our striker. Now here the opponent is very aggressive as well, but this time he's showing more signs of anticipation. He is pushing heavily to cover the inside, leaving the back end completely wide open for us to hopefully turn in. Because of that, we hold down the R1 or our B button as the pass approaches the striker, which allows us to trigger the dummy, showing how what tools are used can be determined by the opponent's positioning. The dummy, by the way, is a move that we actually have a dedicated video for, so if you're interested in that and you want to build a stronger foundation, you can also find the link to that in the description below. If you don't factor in shooting angles, you significantly lower your chances of scoring in any FIFA, because after all, each iteration of FIFA has certain angles which work more than others, and it's just part of the game to adjust your decision making to account that, because it's much more than just getting by your opponent. You have to line up the shot as best as you can. Now in this example here, we receive the ball on the edge with Messi and we perform the old reliable scoop turn to push us to the open side that our opponent has given us. As you can see, the space is created and we do have a nice and open gap, but there's more here to do. The key here is to make sure our analog stick is pointed nice and parallel to the near post so that Messi's first touch after the scoop turn puts him almost directly in line with that near post. The reason for this is that it sets up the outside of the boot shot on Messi's strong foot into the near post which in FIFA 20 is a very reliable and effective way to shoot the ball. Razor sharp, almost like a clean snooker shot. Different situation here, we're much deeper into the box, our striker with the ball is facing the opposite way of the opponent's goal, and there is a defender behind him ready to make life hard if we decide to simply turn to either side and shoot. As a result, we go for the running scoop turn which, as we mentioned in previous skill move tutorials, which again, you can find the link to all that in the description below, requires you to not only be using a 5-star skiller, but also to be moving. 
In this case, the result allows us to push away from the defender behind us for some breathing room. And the first touch after the skill move is, as usual, the key here in order to position ourselves at least perpendicular to the goal and increase, again, the odds of the shot being accurate. Without that extra touch, you can often waste the finishing touches and fail to push the correct spaces to score. Knowing as many factors to consider as we have discussed so far is a great thing, but at the end of the day, games of FIFA are very dynamic. Things change all the time, and you'll encounter slightly different scenarios all the time. That's why you'll constantly need to weigh everything we've talked about and make your decisions accordingly. Sometimes, you'll be better off ignoring a player's strong foot and pushing towards his weak foot, because that's the best chance that you'll get. Sometimes you'll have to take extreme measures to adjust and line up your shot as best as you can. The point is that these factors can't be prioritized the same way every single time. They are guidelines to keep in mind and which ones you end up prioritizing will vary according to the situation at hand. This clip is a really good example of taking this philosophy and treating every situation as its own. As we pass the ball into our Haji, we're aware that the center is relatively open and ready to exploit. Also, our player is left-footed, our opponent hasn't really shown signs that he's going to cover the inside yet, and we could actually line up a really good shot by attacking the middle and shooting to the near post. Despite all these signs that would scream for us to push this area in FIFA 20, knowing tendencies of your opponent, knowing what the obvious move in the moment is, can open up Pandora's box in terms of outthinking your opponent and pushing the areas of the pitch that he simply can't afford to cover. Knowing that he can't afford to cover the outside because he's too busy making sure the inside is covered, we know that we can perform the first time fake shot, but in a way that keeps us going straight into the direction that we were already headed in, all in anticipation of the fact that we were confident our opponent would have attempted to cover the inside eventually. That's exactly what happens as we successfully fly past him and once we do, we take one more small touch to account for the best possible angle we can on our weak foot. And as they say, fortune favors the brave and we come away with a goal. And it all comes down to the fact that we knew he couldn't afford not to cover the center. If you want consistent results in FIFA 20, you'll have to learn what works, and a huge part of FIFA 20 is transforming the many moments you experience in and around the box into clean opportunities. Now the factors we discussed today are important, but like I hinted at earlier, they aren't set in stone. Nobody makes the right choices 100% of the time, but understanding these concepts and learning when to prioritize certain decisions over others will not only increase the amount of goals per game that you score, or at the very least the amount of chances that you create, but it will also help you pick and choose moments to get creative. After all, recognizing moments where doing the unexpected is beneficial will really come in clutch in tight games against top players. Nonetheless, that's going to be it for me today. I hope this was useful, and if it was, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys next time. We also want to thank our elite supporters over on Patreon, and if you're interested, you can become a patron today to support the channel as well as receive cool benefits in return over at patreon.com forward slash bpg the guide.